Let's uh, ask some questions. I, I don't want to be the only one in the spotlight here. Well, <laughs> we can even shut it off if yeah. you like. Yeah, that's okay. Sure. My question is for sure. Becky, and I wanted to find out what is the process, go on, go back. if there is one, to request a trial when there is no scheduled IEP meeting or anything, but let's say the OT um, makes a request to trial something. What is the process? Depends on what the trial is about. <laughs> Um, it, so there, if it's a piece of equipment yeah. that has to go out, then um, again, it kind of depends. Um, so if it's something that we have, the process for a trial is different than if it's something we need to go either borrow from the AT center or purchase or, you know, that, all of that kind of plays into it. So I can't really answer it as a general question because there's also um, when you go through insurance companies for communication devices there is always a 30-day trial with that <laughs> um, it doesn't they don't pay for it unless they know that we have data that shows it works <laughs> so that's um, that's another process and so it's hard to say that and also oftentimes um, related service providers will you know they don't they might email me but oftentimes they will do the trials sort of within, them, within their own resources if they have them at the school. So I'm not trying to avoid the question, but I'm just saying that it's, it really it differs and some of the processes are more developed than others. There certainly, you know, there, there certainly could be um, an, an assessment is certainly um, an, an appropriate um, step at that point. Um, but I think one of the best uh, ways to use the assistive technology uh, resource center is to come in and uh, see, ask that question there and see what kinds of things are available. And you can do that uh, with or without your son um, present um, and it just helps you then um, go back and, and talk knowledgeably to the, the staff um, who you know maybe dismissed your concerns at first you know if then you can say well you know I saw this you know this seems like something that really um, could work for my son or I borrowed it and he really did seem um, to um, benefit from it can we then take a look at um, how this might uh, help him um, do better in school. And it's also quite possible, I mean, technology changes really quickly. Um, so it's possible that two years ago, it might not, the, the tool that would work for him wasn't <laughs> available. <laughs> so it's but that. But it's just the first one day of every month is a drop in day so there's no time. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the drop-in times are on the other handout. Oh, you're right. Nope, it doesn't say that. I'm sorry. Um, they're generally in the um, morning and afternoons. They, they have slots both in the morning and in the afternoon um, that you can um, drop in. And again, the best place um, to start is by making an appointment and talking to someone about what you're interested in to make sure that that's going to be available that day because it's also a lending program and you know you might be looking to see something um, that might not be available if it's out on loan. 
Yeah, I, I don't know that particular <laughs> scenario, but, but, but we're purchasing new devices all the time. And uh, one of the things that we really recommend is that on the high-tech communication devices in particular, that we have um, staff who are able to support it. So um, usually we ask that you identify someone um, like a speech pathologist that you're working with who can support you with it because we don't have the resources to do training one-to-one -one on um, those yeah, devices. Sure. Did, so did you ask to extend it or, or try it again or? No, because I mean, I just know that I'm around. Yeah. <coughs> sure. But anyways, I just want to know how today is now that sure. you know, that's well, that was a couple years ago. Sure. Well, like everyone, <laughs> um, we have to use our resources um, as efficiently as possible. But we're uh, always buying uh, new equipment and replenishing it mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you should be able to access uh, relatively new equipment. Well, she doesn't have um The tax? Yeah, Did you bring any of the the devices to school? Did you send any of them to school? Yeah, they never got used. Obviously, that one. Because we cooperate. I mean, Children's Hospital frequently emails me to say that we have a trial starting with this with this student. Can you help support it? Um, and I do that. That that's a good chunk of my time is <laughs> supporting yeah, device yeah, trials yeah. from that. Because often, if the, because I sort of over, I don't exactly oversee it, but I do, I kind of have my fingers in a lot of schools <laughs> in terms of the, the device trials, and I've got a lot of experience with that. Whereas your average SLP in a school system may only do one or two device trials yeah. ever, <laughs> whereas I have yeah. probably one or two going on so at any given time. So, so should I ask for a technology assessment or should I say position evaluation? How do I go you can bring it up to ask if, is, I mean, assistive technology, it's mandated in the law, needs to be considered at every IEP meeting. That's part of, that's part of an IEP meeting. They have to check off, did you consider assistive technology for this child, yes or no? Okay, so, ask a request in writing. If you do request it in writing, you end up with an evaluation. If you are comfortable with the idea of a consultation, you can always ask the SLP. I mean, I can't really comment on the, very, on the specific situation, so. What's the SLP? Speech language pathologist, speech therapist.
So there's a ton of research. <laughs> there's a lot of research out there that shows that voice output devices don't make, do not ever um, decrease the amount of voice of spoken language that the child produces. Um, they've yeah. done a lot, a lot of studies on that. In most cases, the spoken language of the child actually increases. Um, in some cases, it stays the same, but in but in no cases, and this is, we're talking probably about 15 research studies out there at this point. I mean, they've done lots of, because this is a big question that, that and it's logical. I mean, it, some people just sort of assume that if we give them something else that talks, they won't talk. Um, but the research is pretty clear that just the opposite happens. Is there, no, there's, I mean, if you go to Children's Hospital, then obviously your insurance would cover it, but if you request the assessment through Boston Public Schools, it's part of the IEP. What? I thought it was the school. Yes. During your IEP, during your IEP review. You tell them you want it. And obviously, we need to do some additional training for some of our our personnel out there along the lines of how to use it, and we're well aware of that. That gives you the information for it's against regulation. So you call the ed, special ed bureau, and they will help you with all of the information that you need. Okay, thank you. Who's the special ed bureau? Um, they have a website, so, um, so that's why I found it. Somebody told me about it. Special, um, special ed view. So that's in the Department of Education. So about the state level or the? Yeah, the state level. I don't know what it is. I just went on the internet. Somebody just gave me part of the name, and I'm not computer savvy. So I just went on, I put in, and it pulls it up. Then you choose the, put the nearest name to it. That's all I can tell you. And I got help. And I got a number, and I called them, and they called me back, and they gave me an advocate. So the information is out there. We just have to search for it. In terms for both of them, um, you can always make the request in writing for and submit it to your special ed coordinator, and then they can even if it doesn't get if there's not enough time to make the evaluation for this current IEP, you could always ask for a reconvening meeting afterwards after the evaluation is done and to have it added to your uh, son or daughter's IEP. Okay. And there are also occasionally kids for whom voice output is not appropriate <laughs> for any number of reasons. And so I don't want to say that, that the previous recommendations were not, not okay, because it might have been. I don't, I can't, not knowing anything, I can't say. It seems like they're saying they don't even get the evaluation, they just told, no, this kid doesn't need that. Right, you know? So don't have to have the eye. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have, you have, I also, you have to be very careful with that. You don't reject the whole thing. No, just <laughs> the part, just the part. There we go. You can reject by omission, meaning that you requested it and you denied it. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Let's not, let's not go. You can also get an independent evaluation if you want. Yeah, how do you go about doing that? Find a provider. I know it's a state. There's a state that has a way to do it. Well, no, they, the district will give you some information. We can't, we can't as a district tell you where to go to get an independent evaluation. That's not very independent. <laughs> yeah.
Thank you. Very Thank good. You so much. Thank you all for coming. And, uh, oh, it's forms for Where's My yes. Bus. We have forms for Where's My Bus. We have general issue forms if anybody needs it. There's also other handouts right up here. Thanks. Thanks for coming.